Uh, so today we're going to talk to you about how you can wheel Snap the power of Snap AR for brand success. Uh, so I'm going to start with myself. Uh, I'm Celia. I'm a technical artist at Paper Triangles and Project Studio Wrangler. Uh, yep, I have another Paper Triangles team member, uh, Frank, in the audience. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to hand it over to the other two panelists. So hi everyone, my name is Mo, I'm from Tactical. Uh, I'm joining you guys here from Dubai, so a bit jet lagged. But uh, yeah, I'm a product manager. Everything AR and Tactical is basically on my plate. So, yeah. And I'm Naomi, uh, I'm a technical artist, kind of turning developer, I suppose. Um, I work with Bear Tree Media in Boston, but I'm located in Philadelphia myself. Awesome, all right, so we're gonna, take, uh, we're gonna kick off the first topic. Uh, so in general, we all work at Preferred Partners. This is Partner Summit. And uh, I wanted to ask, so what gets brands really excited about Snap AR? And I'll say from my experience at Paper Triangles, I find that brands really love it when they get their mark or their story using cutting edge technology. Uh, and also, I think AR uh, provides, I think AR provides modern solutions for kind of insurmountable, what would seem like to be insurmountable problems. So uh, an example would be uh, retail. During the quarantine or during the pandemic, uh, a lot of retail that focused on the eyes or the, uh, the face, uh, obviously those are hot spots for COVID. So brands needed to find a new solution uh, to still engage with retail. So uh, at Paper, we worked uh, with we work with Sunglasses Hut uh, to make a virtual try-on. We uh, would utilize Portal, um, the Portal experience, to still engage users with that retail experience. We also worked with Columbia on a flagship lens, uh, so users can still do a try-on experience and still try on the clothing without the risk of uh, catching COVID. Um, but I'll hand it over to you, uh, Mohammed. Yeah, um, one of the things that is very unique about the Snap ecosystem and that excites brands is the audience. So in Snap, aside from other platforms, you have an audience that is really used to and engaged in using and experimenting with AR. So everyone who uses Snap by nature uses AR. So you don't really need to teach the user how to open a lens or use a lens. Most of the time, it just comes really natural with it. So even like handing over experiences to people, whether it's sponsors, whether it's community, Whenever the user sees that yellow snap code, they automatically know, like, I'm going to pull up my phone and I'm going to scan that with my snap camera. Yeah, I think uh, I'd echo what Celia said. It's definitely a big part of it is brands seeing, seeing their mark and their characters or their story as part of the story of their fans that they're experiencing through their camera. So, you know, um, and, and, they can, and they can see that anchored to this completely new input that um, that we have, which is which is the camera feed um, that the AR is overlaid on. So you know whether from Kitar Bear to Kia, like they're seeing their characters um, living in the world of their users and as part of their users' stories, and um, and I think that that is it's just it's just such a um, it's such an imaginative space. You know, there there's not much that can't be accomplished with that. Yeah, to echo on that, I think, you know, follow up on that, uh, getting the brand story across through AR, storyboarding, uh, those are some ways uh, we can definitely make the brand happy. I think that sort of is a way we can define success, uh, measure success in AR. Uh, Mo, how do, you, uh, how do you guys have tactical measure success in AR? Well, I'm, I'm going to basically split this into two parts. The first one is, you know, what brands are really interested in, which is, to be completely honest, is the data. Like, they need to see that those experiences are performing well, they're converting, they're uh, bringing in the numbers, whether it's engagement, impressions, um, or playtime. And then the other side, like, for us as developers to measure success, usually it's just, have I done something that I really would enjoy using? So if my experience is cool, looks shiny, and, and, and you know, with the particles and all of that cool stuff, then it's success for me. Yeah, that's something a lot of, uh, I think a lot of creators tend to forget about is uh, the user, generally you want the end user just to be happy using the lens. And sometimes we will include, uh, sometimes like beauty effects are included or a car lens. You know, you wouldn't think, what does beauty have to do with cars? But at the end of the day, the user just wants to feel good using the lens, right? Uh, Naomi, can you add on to that? 
Yeah, it's, a, you know, again, it's a two-way, and, and I'll take a different two-part approach, but it's a conversation between the user and the brand. And so, from one side, success is, did the brand get across the initial story that they wanted? And, um, and uh, defining, defining success a lot comes from, um, you know, it starts, it starts out with a story, and so AR is just is one tool to accomplish that. Um, and then on the other side, it's does that story layer into the way that their fans and their users are telling their own story through their camera because that's the other critical side um, where, you know, the, the, it's, the, the, the brand wants to get to consumers and wants to speak to them but also wants uh, the consumers to be able to speak about um, and, and uh, you know, enhance their lives in some way that uh, involves that involves the brand story as well. Yeah. Uh, and one studio has like pretty easy to use, pretty accessible tools to create those stories and make it uh, really engage with the audience. Um, so an example is recently we worked with Beyond Wonderland uh, on an AR compass. So this was we don't we can't show it on the screen, but uh, it was shown at the keynote earlier this morning. So it was a 3D map overlay that would show up on the phone, and you could find what stage, just for Beyond Wonderland, you could uh, find what stage you wanted to go to, and you would have like a little arrow that would direct you and show you the distance in a matter of feet. So that was um, us using the AR Compass tool, uh, with using Lens Studio to create an experience for festival goers that would be really easy, that would just make the whole festival experience so much easier. It also worked with Snap Friends, too. I mean, you guys have all, have you, for those of you who've been to a music festival, have you all had that experience of trying to find your friends at a festival, and you're trying to come up with like what landmarker you're at, and, <laughs> right? So this was a really great, this was a really great way that if, uh, if you had you know, Snapchat on your phone and you can find your friends, like so much easier. And we were using it too, we were testing it um, at the festival and it was, um, it was really fun, it was a really fun um, moment where it's like, oh, this tool that we built, now we can use it too <laughs> to find our teammates. So uh, that was really cool. Um, so that's one example of like one tool. Obviously with retail experiences, there's the e-commerce uh, template, we have body tracking, head tracking, if you want to track retail products to your face, or if you want to, uh, now we have clothing simulation as well, so if you want to simulate clothing, so you don't have to, you don't have to go to the store. And it's not just for those who are enthusiasts on their phones or don't want to go to the store, but it's also a great, uh, great accessibility tool as well. So um, let me kick over to you, Mohamed. What tools in AR do you guys like to enjoy using? Uh, well, we, we do have, or we've seen lately a lot of push from the retail side um, and retail brands. And something that happens to work really well with these brands is more simpler executions. Again, when looking at defining success to brands, usually that doesn't always mean, you know, building the complex, the super complex experiences. Usually it's just something super simple that hits the mark for them you know, puts the product in front of the user's hand, gets them that, you know, try it before you buy experience. Um, and Snap is really good with, you know, adding the shopping modules, linking products, you know, the product catalog from the client side to the actual lens experience on the user's side, which is really helping the user to just quickly try something, click, and now you're suddenly, it's in your car. Yeah, I think uh, from, from my perspective, object detection is a huge one. Um, and you know we we mentioned um, layering experience over uh, over the user's camera feed, and for example, you know Snap has such great built-in tracking features like body, uh, hand, and and can really contextualize those experiences to the user in so many ways. But beyond that, um, the ability to add custom body tracking, where is you know is so place where Lens Studio especially excels in terms of um, where the various AR technologies are at today. Uh, you know, we can, we can actually go so, so uh, deep and finessed as to take like a specific kind of chip or a cookie and, and you know, track an experience and not only, you know, not, we, we, can, we can have the lens logically interact with that 
uh, with just this visual that the user is able to see through their camera and actually have it, um, you know, kind of talk back to the user in, in that really intelligent manner. Yeah, so I know these tools sound really complicated for those of you who maybe not have, maybe don't have as much experience with Lens Studio. Uh, so uh, it brings me to my next question. What are some ways that you can help brands who might be hesitant to invest in AR? Uh, what are some ways you can encourage them to cross that line? So I know I feel at our company, Paper Triangles, what we're really good at is we have a very strong team of designers. So we're very good in the design phase, nailing down the look of the lens and making the brand feel as comfortable as possible before engaging in the lens production process. So we have, we go with storyboards, I think we have really great designers, and we really don't underestimate the power of 2D. Um, so I'm gonna kick it over to you, Mohammed. Uh, how do you guys, how do you guys encourage brands who might be hesitant to invest in AR? How do you, um, how do you guide them through that? Yeah, it's usually, it's, it's one of two things, or both of them combined. It's the first one is educate. So if someone is super new to AR, the, the best thing you could do for them is to educate them on what AR is, how it works, and some examples of what would work for their use case. So just showing visuals of, you know, if you're a makeup brand, like look at what these guys have been doing, and, you know, the great results that they're getting. So the education piece plays a really big part, and I think like the storyboarding and like showing the visuals plays really well at that part. The second thing is just to keep things simple. Like you said, you know, the tools, if you, get, you know, if you go super deep down with the tools and the technicals of it, yeah. it's really complicated, but for the clients, all they need to know is you know, how it's gonna look, how it's gonna work. Just keeping things simple helps with that transition. Leave it up to you. Absolutely, um, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because you know, on the one hand, um, with, as, with the tools that we have available to us to educate clients, um, you know, there's, there's trying it out themselves. So the ability to just send, send a client, you know, AR to try is amazing and uh, powerful in its own right. But even, even going simpler than that, like, uh, you know, we're really, as developers, we're really immersed in AR production all the time. And sometimes it's kind of hard to remember what it was like to not have AR, you know, and to, and to go back to when, um, to a place where uh, it wasn't really integrated in what we see every day, which, you know, it's being it's being taken up by a lot of brands over the over the world. But also at the same time, there are plenty of people still out there who don't understand how this works. And so, demo videos I find can be such a strong way to um, to kind of connect that to something they know, like uh, connect uh, AR to a real life experience and um, and um, one of the most powerful ways, I think, through demo videos to do that is just show people utilizing AR in their daily lives and enjoying it. Like, that is just undeniable um, from a branding perspective of just, uh, you know, we all know, like, people are using AR and they love to do it and they love to uh, um, use this as a tool in their lives. Yeah, so in a way, we're also kind of like educators, too. So, uh, yeah, like to touch on your point, we, on one hand, uh, we show demo videos, and also we have, you know, we usually educate not on just Snap AR, but also how to use Snapchat, too. So having tools to, having, having tools to, I see Frank smiling, because we definitely, you know, there's definitely have been calls, okay, you know, here's what button to press, or here's where to swipe, and just uh, walking, walking an account manager or a brand uh, through the process of using Snapchat because the target demographic is younger, right? So, uh, yeah, so it makes sense. Uh, all right, so uh, we have time for about maybe one more question, right? Okay, so uh, how do you, okay, so how do we ensure a, how do we ensure that an AR experience launches smoothly? Uh, so how do we know that once we, um, you know, once the lens has been finished, how do we make sure that when it's ready, ready to launch, uh, it's, it's a smooth process. So one thing is we make great use, and I'm sure anyone who's uploaded um, a professional lens has made great use of the QA process. Um, and also, uh, personally, my favorite, uh, my favorite feature of Lens Studio is that you can try lenses on different phone ratios. So different phone aspect ratios. 
uh, everyone, everyone has a different phone, and sometimes, I don't know if any, anyone else is here has had the experience of using a, maybe an older phone and the lens, like, so maybe some UI elements are gonna be off screen and um, things like that. So, Mo, how do you make sure? Yeah, it, you kind of nailed it right there, the, the QA, the process of QA from Snap and within Lens Studio is really great. And then, obviously, even with that, things break. So the other side of it is just having support. So reaching out to Snap, reaching out to the support team, there's multiple ways, the forums, the emails. Uh, I know a lot of people that we've met here kind of bug them with emails. Why is this not working? Um, but yeah, just that QA and testing multiple forms. Yeah, for sure. QA, I think, is I, uh, it's, a, it's a kind of the back and forth process of make, fail, make, fail. And, um, you know, can, um, uh, I, think, I think on the other side of that, um, test with you know, beyond, beyond the tools, uh, I, it's, it's often important, again, a, a question of context, you know, test with um, people that uh, aren't immersed in AR all the time. Like, I like to think of it as like, you know, this, this AR experience may make a lot of sense to me, but like, what about my mom? You know, like, like uh, as, as a developer, we're, we're really, uh, you know, immersed in, in the technology all, all day, potentially, <laughs> um, and so, you know, it. I, I'll I'll go to the other room to my wife and like and test it with her, and she'll find this completely different thing that I might not have even thought of. And so, um, so that's another. That's just a way to kind of make sure that what you're making makes sense to a wide variety of people. Okay, we have just a little bit of time left, so I'm going to ask one more question. Um, have either of you ever worked with a brand that started off as almost like new, like? I almost said scrubs, but like, you know, total newbies to AR, um, and maybe they were really hesitant, and then became, have you ever walked a brand from being a beginner to now innovating uh, in AR? Sure, I, I can go ahead. Um, yeah, we, um, like back in the early days of, uh, you know, probably in like 2019, um, we started working with WWF, World Wildlife Fund, um, and you know, this was really, very early days of AR generally, but um, we, you know, the key is just start off small, start off simple and build from there. And, um, and you can always continue building, uh, can, you know, successful campaigns from there. So we started off with, um, you know, a little bit more relatable, maybe like a, a face tracking lens. And then from there, you know, they got to try it and then they started to see the real power of it. And then, you know, we moved on to immersive world experiences. And so I think, you know, start simple and build. 100%, I'll echo that. Um, the education piece, again, plays a big role in this because if a brand is new to AR, then the first step is you just teach them. Um, this is what AR is. This is what people out there have been doing. You know, this is how it's working. And then, just like what Naomi just said, like, you don't need to go super deep in, like, portals and 3D and all of that. Sometimes the simpler things work, and once they see that you know, a small experience with a small investment works, then they go, okay, well, what about if I you know, put a little bit more of an investment in it, put a little bit more money, a little bit more effort, then I'm probably gonna get a lot better results. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you both uh, for joining me on this uh, panel, and thank you guys all for coming. Uh, thank you.